Truma, makers of the combi heater and iNet system, are proud to sponsor Practical Motorhome TV. Hello and welcome to Practical Motorhome TV. If you're looking for motorhome reviews, friendly expert technical advice and campsite reviews, then you've come to the right place. Coming up on tonight's show, I'll be visiting Somerset and Highbridge Caravans and Motorhomes to look at a Swift Bolero 612 EK. Then I'll be setting my sat-nav for Run Cottage Touring Park. And coming up after that, Diamond Dave Newell talks you through the pros and cons of refillable gas cylinders. Bolero is Swift Group's upper mid-market motorhome range. It sits just underneath the portfolio topping Contiki. As you can see, the black edition version has been very popular for good reason. It looks really sharp. Now, there are two models for the 2016 season that have just been introduced, and one of them is the 612 EK. So before it tips down and I get completely wet, let's get right inside and have a look. The 612 is an end kitchen two berth. The clue's in the name, EK. Now this layout is very practical and very honest as well. It does exactly what it says on the tin. At this end of the vehicle, you have your kitchen and very well equipped it is too. The cooker has dual fuel configuration. So there's one electric hot plate and three gas burners. Separate oven and grill, very good indeed. And up here, a microwave oven, and that's above a dual fuel fridge with separate freezer compartment. And just look at these amazing worktops. They're very low profile, very wipe clean. So great for hygiene and they really look the part too. Now, a couple of other things in the visual grammar of this Bolero range is the splashback around the window at the end. It's very cool indeed. Turn it on and it really looks the part. Underneath that, you'll find some drawers. The cutlery drawer at the top doesn't have soft closing, but the one underneath that does. And underneath that is a cupboard with two shelves. The circular sink is deep enough to be fairly useful and it has a smart monoblock tap. So just like the rest of the kitchen, it looks really sharp. One of the changes to the Bolero range for 2016 was a new GRP overcab profile. And as you can see, it's absolutely fantastic when you take into account the opening cab skylight. This makes a tremendous amount of difference to the ambience of the lounge. Just consider all this light flooding in from the side of the vehicle, from above through the windscreen, and from the roof light above the gangway. It's tremendous. It's worth noting that there is a step up from the back of the vehicle to the front, but once you're in the lounge, everything, including the cab, is on the same level, so very user-friendly. The configuration of the lounge, as you can see, is parallel seats, so you face each other, and also with these seats rotated, it becomes a super sociable space. You can also add a folding leaf table for mealtimes into the gangway here, and under where the table would be, there's a handy storage hatch in the floor, perfect for keeping valuables out of sight if you find yourself touring on the wrong side of the tracks. The double bed in the lounge makes up very easily. You have a sliding slats frame on each seat base that pulls into the gangway. You drop the foot on each one and rearrange the cushions. The whole process will literally take under a couple of minutes. And for night times, obviously you've got pleated cassette blinds in the lounge windows and up front blackout blinds in the cab and in the side cab windows. And speaking of the cab, the Swift Bolero is based on the Fiat Ducato. Fitted to this particular vehicle, we have chroma rings around the instrument dials, steering wheel mounted controls for the stereo, and the drinks holder in lieu of the central glove box. There's also a tablet holder and the techno aluminium surround effect going around the vents, all very nice. Now, there's a Vogue pack of special options that you can also fit to this vehicle. That will add cruise control, air conditioning, and a driver airbag. Compact corner washroom is split into two discrete areas. In the furthest corner, you have a very well-lined shower compartment, which has an Eco Camel Orbit shower head for maximum efficiency on the waterfront. Next to that, and linked by a bifold shower door to keep the spray away from all those wooden surfaces, you have a vanity unit with a polygon-shaped sink, a half-length mirror, and two task lights up above. And next to that, most importantly of all, you have a radiator for the Audi wet central heating. The Swift Bolero Black Edition 612 EK starts at £57,070 on the road. It weighs 3,500 kilograms, so anyone can drive it on a standard car license. Now, I think this new layout is a worthy addition to a range that's already very impressive. It's a great interpretation of this layout. 
Now there are other options available at lower price points, but I think that misses the point. Swift have put a lot of added extras into this and it's a very stylish fan indeed. So if you have the budget, then why not treat yourselves? Now some people may bemoan the fact that it's only two travel seats and a two berth. So only couples can use it during the day and night time. You can't take anyone with you on tour and you can't have anyone to stay over. But for some people, that won't matter at all. They like keeping their touring reasonably straightforward and compact when on the road without taking masses of stuff with them, just the two of them to enjoy touring together. And for that kind of market, one thing you can say is it takes two to tango in this bolero. The Eastern England regional winner of Practical Motorhome's Top 100 Sites Guide for 2016 is Run Cottage, its second consecutive victory. Situated close to the market town of Woodbridge in Suffolk, Run Cottage is open all year and boasts 45 touring pitches spread over five acres, so it never feels crowded. There are tranquil views over the park pond and across open farmland, so you're sure to feel relaxed during your visit. Once you've pitched your motorhome, you can take a one and a half mile walk to the nearest beach or visit the tourist information point for further details of local activities. The latter include the Sutton Hoo Visitor Centre, Orford Castle, Framlingham Castle and the attractive town of Aldborough. New for this year, we've installed two luxury glamping pods. They're situated round our wildlife pond, uh, adjacent to the stream. Um, they're proven very, very popular. They're fully kitted out um, with oak beds, um, leather sofas, they've got a nice veranda at the front of them with a bistro table on, um, barbecue area, they've got a fridge, tea coffee maker facilities etc. Fully kitted out um, in a very sunny location and they're proving very popular. They've got a clean modern shower block complete with washing up station. Um, there's a washing machine in there and a dryer. We also have two individual shower rooms that are unisex rooms, which is very handy if you've got young children because you can take both sexes in, obviously, and, and clean and scrub the children in a confined environment, which can be handy with children. The site is incredibly well maintained with friendly and welcoming owners. This is our second season at Run Cottage. We came for the first time last year, spent most of the season here. We love the area and we love the site because it's so well kept with lovely friendly owners. We hope very much that we'll be coming back again. The site is beautiful. The owners are magnificent, they look after everybody. They've won the Anglia region for the last four or five years and this year they actually came sixth nationally. We love it. We've recommended it to so many people who still keep coming. Are you in the market for a classy VW T6 conversion? Then Kent-based CMC, also known as Concept Multicar, could be a good place to start. And how about its trio style, especially when they can supply it in this rather fetching blackberry colour, which I'm pleased to reveal maintains the theme on the inside. As you can see, the converter has made a great job of matching the exterior of the vehicle to the interior. I really like this seating with these blackberry coloured reliefs going on here alongside the cream. Elsewhere, fairly standard campervan configuration with a kitchen along the right hand side here, featuring a compressor fridge, two gas burners and a sink under this recess. And you can look at the lacquer that's used on top of the work surface. Very nice indeed, a kind of speckled effect. And check out that tap, that looks properly space age. Come night time, converting the Veriotech seating into a comfortable bed is a pretty painless operation. I'm going to try and do it as gracefully as possible. First of all, you pull up on this section here to release one of the seats. Then there's a lever down the side, which you raise up. And then the rest of the bed drops into position. And the section at the back is obviously in position, ready to take the sleepers. And I know exactly how they feel. I would love to splash into it myself at this very moment. But no, the show must go on. And what a show it is up here in the cab which as you'll notice, it has these rather fetching X-line seats to match the rest of the van. Now let's talk about matters mechanical. We come to the fact that there's a 150 PS engine fitted to this particular van. The normal size is 100 PS. This van also has the DSG automatic transmission, which is most excellent for those long drives. And obviously you can help keep yourselves fully focused on the job in hand by hooking up your USB devices through the dashboard. Elsewhere, you'll find the usual refinements that Volkswagen are well known for, 
and because this is a T6 base, it's the latest Euro 6 engine. And another thing I really like that I've found up here is this very user-friendly handbook that tells you everything you need to know about this particular vehicle, lovingly put together by the converter. For a compact van, the storage solutions are pretty good. On the offside here, you've got a gas locker and next to that is your water supply. On this van, you have the water supply standard and also the auxiliary one as well. Two evenly matched containers that you can just switch over. Pretty good stuff too. Now we spoke earlier on about the seat bench. It slides up and down. Obviously when that is in its furthest forwards position nearest the driver and passenger, you'll get acres of space at the back for all those items you might need to be lugging around. And a further feature is in the lid of the boot, you have a zip-in pocket for a pair of camping chairs. Very neatly done. The CMC Trio style X-Line as tested today will cost you £58,003. It has four berths and five travel seats, so if you don't always tour as a couple, you have options for taking people away on tour with you. Now, its sharp styling inside won't please traditionalists, but that's no bad thing. In actual fact, you can start specking up one of these vans from £45,000, so as always, it's a question of what you want and how much you're prepared to pay. One thing's for sure though, CMC's excellent reputation for build quality and the fact that they use so much kit from the German brand Rymo means that your potential investment will spend many years on the road. Are you looking for a fixed bed, low profile coach built which carries twin single beds at the rear but without the garage it usually goes underneath? Maybe you'd prefer an end washroom in the space of all that storage. And perhaps Aldi heating ticks another box for you. Well, the French manufacturer Rapido could have come up with a solution for all those things and plenty more in the shape of the 665F, a new model for the 2016 season that looks very interesting indeed. So let's find out if this truly could be a love affair that starts in France. Rapido is based in northwest France and is the number two motorhome manufacturer in its domestic market. Exports are very important to the company as well, and Germany and the UK have been very successful territories in recent years. In fact, Rapido was voted the best manufacturer of pre-owned motor caravans in the Practical Motorhome Owner Satisfaction Awards 2016, so you need have no worries or concerns about build quality. Now, as I mentioned, the 665F is one of nine new models for the 2016 model year, and its USPs is that it offers Aldi heating, fixed twin single beds, and an end washroom. Up front here in the lounge is the standard continental configuration with the half dinette, the jump seat on this side, and as always, the revolving chairs to open up the lounge and make it a super sociable space. This upholstery is a 240 pound cost option, but as you can see, it goes very well with the cabinet work, which is very well put together, I must say. I like those brushed aluminium inserts, those chrome handles, and if you look inside, the actual action on the hinges is very pleasing as well. In fact, it's more like a strut. Just look at how this palmet integrates the cab and the living quarters, very well put together. You can barely see the join. And this curtain goes round on a track to black out daylight during the evenings. LED lighting is provided in addition to two side windows. And up above in the ceiling is a roof light that has four LED task lights pleasingly set around it. Now the V-shaped midships kitchen is quite compact, but it does have some fantastic features. To start with, there's maple edging here on the edge of the worktop, a very pleasing detail indeed. Obviously next to the sink, which is plenty deep enough for a few plates and pots. Next to that, three gas burners in a line for maximum functionality. No having to arrange them in a triangle, they're all there straight in front of you, very easy indeed. More of these very pleasing overhead lockers in this cabinet design I mentioned earlier. Down below you'll find an oven and grill, and above that a soft closing cutlery drawer with central locking. Yes, a feature often found on much more expensive A-class motorhomes is available in this Rapido as standard kit. It's very easy to use, the drawer is closed, you rotate the knob, and then you don't have to worry about your knives and forks taking over the inside of the van while you're in transit. Next to that is a storage solution that will please bon viveurs. Space for three wine bottles. Could this van really be made in France? I think it could. And next to that is a very handy drawer that pulls out and has plastic dividers to effectively make three different compartments. Now this bed's configuration is pretty well served. They're just under two meters long, so it should be ample for most people, and there's plenty of storage underneath, especially on this, the offside. 
and there's also another storage solution in the shape of a floating wardrobe above the end of the near side bed. And don't forget you get six overhead lockers and as we were saying earlier, Rapido's designers have really been strutting their stuff with this fantastic design and smooth action. Now us Brits love an end washroom and this one is a particularly well executed version. Just look at this really stylish vanity unit with built in storage underneath. And up above that, the cupboard door is in fact a mirror that moves from side to side so you can position it exactly where you need it. The shower compartment is in the near rear side corner and looks very well lined. Opposite that, you'll find the wardrobe. There are four cupboards to the left behind the wardrobe door and to the right, more hanging space to go with the wardrobe in the bedroom. As standard, the 665F comes with the Fiat Ducato 2.3 litre engine producing 130 bhp. Our test van has Fiat's Comfortmatic transmission, which is a 1,540 pound cost option. It all makes for a very smooth experience. This test van also has cruise control, manual air conditioning, and a double DIN stereo unit with USB and Bluetooth connectivity to go with the DAB radio. The Rapido 665F will cost you 51,000 pounds on the road. Our test van with a few added extras is just over 55,000. With an MTPLM of three and a half thousand kilograms, anyone in the family can drive this van and its payload is very respectable at 495 kilograms. At just under 7.4 meters long, this van will meet an above average driveway to park it on, but all things considered, there's a lot going for this particular kind of layout and Rapido's execution. I particularly like the fact that the floor is level throughout and Aldi heating will tick a lot of boxes. So without further ado, I can probably say if this is the kind of thing that floats your boat, then you better make rapid o progress to your local dealer. Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about refillable gas systems. We're all conversant with gas. We use it in our motorhomes regularly. Probably color cylinders, propane or butane. Propane in the red cylinders, butane in the blue. It's all LPG, liquefied petroleum gas. So what are refillable systems? Well, refillable systems are simply cylinders, various sizes. We have 11 kilos here, 10 and a half kilos, six kilos. You use the appropriate cylinder to suit your gas locker size. The beauty of these is you can refill them at any time. Unlike with an exchange cylinder where you have to, when the cylinder's empty, you take it out, take it to the shop, exchange it for a new cylinder, bring it back, put it back in your gas locker. A lot of mither and quite heavy cylinders. These just stay in your gas locker. We have a filler point mounted on the side of the van, typically on the side skirt. So all you do when you call at a fuel station, you just top up the gas system. Easy as that. Two main types of filler. This is the pretty much the industry standard one. It's a simple bayonet fitting inside there. You put the gun in, press the button, fill the system. An alternative is this one, which is a, a flush mounted on the body. And all you do is open the cap, screw the adapter in, attach your gun and fill the system. Auto gas is what we're using. Auto gas is LPG, it's propane. In the UK, it's nearly 100% propane. On the continent, some countries mix butane with it. It's intended as road fuel in those circumstances. And for road fuel, it's drawn off the tank as liquid. We're using it for cooking and heating. We draw it off as vapor. You can install these yourself. It's not much more complicated than replacing an exchange cylinder. You need to fit the filler point to the body of your vehicle. That can be quite scary, drilling a three inch hole in the side of your van and then the high pressure pipe connects to the filler point and connects to the cylinder. So you need to be sure these joints are good and leak free. If in doubt, get a professional to do it. If you do it yourself, I would strongly recommend you get it checked out by a professional before you put the system into use. These two filler points are the standard type for UK, Holland, Northern Ireland, simple bayonet. If you're traveling extensively on the continent and you need to refill, how do you do it? Well, we have adapters to suit the different types of guns used in the other countries. These adapters simply screw into the filling point and then you attach the gun and fill 
exactly as before. They all come in a nice little protective case so you can keep them safe and clean and damage free. So these are the refillable cylinders that go in your gas locker. The other option would be an underslung gas tank mounted underneath your vehicle. Let's go and have a look. So this is a typical bulk tank installation mounted under the floor of the van, mounted with nice strong brackets bolted to the chassis. We don't mount tanks with these straps supporting the weight. These type of straps are only intended to secure the tank to a supporting frame. So here we have the gas regulator. This reduces the pressure from the 100 psi or thereabouts stored in the tank to the working pressure of 30 millibar. That's about half a psi. From there, it's fed in copper pipe up into the vehicle to the manifold where it's split off to the various appliances. This is the valve box. This contains the filler connection from the fill point, a level gauge, which is electrically connected to a display on the dashboard, and the master shut-off valve. Obviously, you can't be crawling underneath the vehicle every time to turn the gas tank on and off, so this valve is generally left turned on, and we have a shut-off valve inside the vehicle at the manifold. And here we have the filler point for the underslung tank of the flat bayonet type. So we screw the adapter in and fill up. Nice and convenient and tidy and discreet. So the advantages of refillable systems are the gas is cheaper. You never need to lift a heavy cylinder of gas again. If you go for a bulk tank, you can get more storage, plus your gas locker becomes available for storage of other items. Got to be a winner all round. Sadly, that's all we've got time for on this week's show. In our next episode, I'll be looking at a £100,000 A-Class from German manufacturer Knaus, and Diamond Dave will be having a look at rear-view cameras. In the meantime, you can keep in touch with us via practicalmotome.com, Facebook or Twitter. Until next time then, tour safe and take care. Truma, makers of the combi heater and iNet system, are proud to sponsor Practical Motorhome TV.